Good morning, YouTube. All right, so this is the second part of the video for spraying these fenders for the tractor. Um, no, I didn't kill anybody on the table. This is from wet sanding, <coughs> as you see. Um, I actually used 800 grit and, you know, did the hand sanding in like the hard to reach areas. And then I used the rubber block, which is still in the water. I got to get that and clean it off. But I used this to do all the flat sanding. Um, it actually came out pretty good. Um, it definitely leveled off a lot from the last time when it sprayed. But I think I found out the reason why it came out so thick and I wasn't so happy with the uh, initial first spray of those fenders. That little filter that I told you about. Um, some reason it seems like with the magic paint, <clears throat> these little filters definitely hold paint back. And it seems like the gun, it makes it struggle, you know, to obviously get the paint through here, out through this mesh into your gun. So honestly, if you're going to go ahead and filter your paint to start with, I'd say pull this out and toss it. A couple people have, a couple people like it. I think it depends on the paint you're spraying. But this particular paint, make sure this is out of your gun. Alright, so I'm not going to use that other gallon because I think that other gallon might have some issues with it too. So I'm only going to start with the, uh, the quartz. And I think I actually might start buying these just in the quartz. That way I can use what I want. Um, and then leave them sealed up and I don't have to worry about you know a big gallon starting to go bad already this one here I went ahead and I shook it up the best I could but I'm going to go ahead and use a paddle to go and mix this up a little better but first I want to get a paper towel and my rubber gloves because as nice as this paint is this shit sticks to your hands very well. So, sorry about that. I should have prepped all this before I started. But, so, I decided to go another route with this tractor paint. I caught something last night that, or should I say, saw something last night on YouTube that caught my eye and made me start to think that <clears throat> even though I'm doing a two tone paint job on this tractor, I think I'm going to add. Um, a little bit of pigment into the clear coat. I think I'm going to give it just a little bit of uh, pearl, I think, in the clear coat. And a couple of the videos that I saw on some of the projects people have done, it looked really nice. So it got me thinking. This tractor here, obviously I'm not doing it, you know, uh, authentic, original restoration already. Um, but yet everything on the tractor is clean painted and refurbished new but to the way I think it should look to make certain points of the tractor pop out well I went through all the different um, clears I mean the pigments you know for the powders and I found one that I like that is very subtle and I'm only going to use maybe a teaspoon um, for the whole quart to mix up in the clear and um, I think it's gonna be nice it's gonna make give that paint like a nice shimmer especially with doing you know this red and then I'm going to use the IH white um, it's almost like a, I guess like off-white, not quite an ivory, <clears throat> but two-toning the tractor paint to start with and then doing the clear coat over top of it with that little pearl. I'm actually, um, uh, I'm actually excited to get this thing painted completely and start doing that. So, <coughs> but anyway, so that's my ideas on the tractor. So we will see how that pans out as I'm doing it, like I said, because this particular one isn't just a, uh, you know, as far well produced it kind of restoration stuff. So I want it to look nice, I want it to be different, I want it to stand out, but I want it to be tasteful without pulling too far away from its heritage. So usually in the gallon, when you do this, you'll see all the color of the black rise to the top. Yes, it's not, it's just a impact driver. Um, but I like to do this, get all around the bottom edges, all around the sides on new quartz, gallons, whatever you open. Bring everything to that surface. Now obviously, be careful pulling it out and up. If you do it too fast, you're going to have this ship all over you in the shop. So. This actually is, uh, isn't too bad, so I think that's actually all I need for that as far as the mixing goes. I 
as far as my ratios on here, I still think doing like the 16 quarts of paint to the four quarts of reducer and four caps of hardener seem to work fairly decent. If I can't get it to come out, um, I want this paint this time, I'm going to mess with it. I might even go to five quarts of the reducer. Um, I want this to come out a little bit more wet and I want to see if I can um, get it to come out of the gun, you know, a little bit more of a mist rather than um, come out so thick because I want the paint to actually come out in the fine droplets so that way it, you know, meshes into itself and lays flat versus come out in the big fat droplets which will basically just stack up and then gives the look like it did on the last time painting these. You can get away with it on small parts, but when you start doing big flat areas, there is no hiding it. If it comes out bad, it's going to come out bad. Alright, so that's good there. I'll come back and I'll clean this off later. I don't want to sit here and have the video. i be showing you guys how to clean a mix. Alright. Usually I like to try to punch a hole in one side and then that way when you pour the paint it'll actually go to that hole and drain back into the can. I just um, I haven't done it yet on my cans but it's a nice little trick sometimes to get the drain to go back in. And maybe after I pour this I'll punch it real fast. Brand new one. I forgot I ran out on that last one. Alright, so again, four caps. One, two, and that was a little overfilled, so I got a little less than that one. Three, four. Now I'm going to mix this a little longer than I mixed the last time, too. Let's see if I can really get this a lot thinner. Now, this paint paints very well. I like it. Um, it has its quirks, just like any other paints, I'm sure, have their issues. But, I don't know. I like the color of it. I like the durability of it. Yeah, it's just, I like the paint. But definitely, uh, I know it seems like one day 
one mixture works, the next day something else works better. So it definitely seems to react a little bit when your temperature or the moisture or everything out in the air. So, I don't know, maybe it's just me. It just seems that way. Obviously, make sure that when you mix up your reducer, mix up your hardener. Bring it all up from that bottom. Make sure everything gets mixed in. So, now I did see some people were suggesting basically a viscosity test by seeing how the paint runs off your mixer. So apparently you want to try to get it to run off in a stream. You can also get a viscosity cup, dip it in there, hold it, and then count your seconds. Um, depending on the requirements of the paint, how long it takes to empty that container out. I haven't gone that far yet, but I see that runs out pretty good. Nice straight stream. Now, <clears throat> what I was told and what I seen was when you lift this out, see how that runs in a straight stream? If it comes out in the stream and then starts dropping like big drops almost right away, too thick. You want to basically have it mixed up so when you raise this out, steady stream goes from your stick to your container. So hopefully it's not too thin. I don't think it is. It's about the same mixture I usually do. Um, actually, I think I went 14 ounces on the paint and then 4 ounces on the um, reducer. So I just, from what I'm seeing so far, I think that's about the mixture that may actually work very well for this so just in case it works out just to make sure i set it i went 14 ounces of paint four ounces of reducer four capfuls of the hardener so we are going to see how much better hopefully that sprays obviously we put the magic paint on the back of the cans on the gallons it just says one gallon of paint to you know one pint of reducer so obviously you can divide that up break it down into eights i don't know it came out to yeah i think four or two ounces of reducer i think it came out to to like 16 ounces of paint um i don't know personally it just seems like it needs to be reduced just a hair bit more than what it's called for now i was told not to deviate too much from it because if you deviate too much from it and then you're going to basically screw up the mixture of your paint but i think that is mixed in very well. It's got a nice string. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to go ahead and head over to the paint booth. Um, bring everything over. We're going to fill up the gun. That little uh, after filter is out. <laughs> so hopefully that will spray better. Obviously I'm going to start on spraying the small parts again. And then we're going to spray the fenders. Um, then when I go over I'll show you the fenders, the wet sanding. What I did just to flatten the surface. And then we're going to get painting. So uh, I will turn it back on once we're through the booth. Alright, so as you see, like I said, I just wet sanded enough to start knocking into some of those high areas I didn't like. You know, it actually feels really nice, it's really smooth to the touch. Definitely happy with how it came out and knocked down a lot of what that stuff was. Balls are here. Obviously I didn't bother getting into like all the little nits and crannies because honestly the fender itself still had imperfections in it um it's original tractor fender so <clears throat> everything came out good i think this next coat of paint going over it is definitely gonna because it's pretty thick paint it's gonna fill in i just didn't want to have it looking like it did when i first sprayed it spray over it because all it's going to do is basically go over top of all the highs um that i did wet sand and then it would have just been the same effect just thicker i wanted to knock all that down um Honestly, the fenders so far are the only thing that gave me um, the issue like that, but I think it was more or less the mix of the gun. I think it was that filter. There's a lot of um, things that contributed to it. Um, you don't see it as much on the chassis because chassis has already got all the casting marks and the things on it, so you don't see as much unless you decided to really sand down all the castings and really smooth the chassis out. This tractor, I wasn't going that far on, but when I do the V8 tractor, I think we're going to go pretty special on that one. I have a really nice paint job in mind. Um, I think I'm actually going to use House of Colors paints on the tins on that tractor. Um, the V8 conversion and everything. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one. But this one here, this is this is kind of my baby here, so I like this one. Alright, let's go ahead and see if I can get this in without spilling it. Definitely make sure you filter your paints. That is 
really bad when you start spraying and contaminants that may have been in the cup, may have been in the gallon, runs through and gets on your stuff. That's really upsetting. So, but also, I don't know, you may have seen me do it. I know other people do it as well. Once I go ahead and now this is strained out, put your cup, your strainer, inside your cup where the paint you haven't mixed yet. So if anything else in the air falls, it'll go in here, it won't go inside here. I guess in theory, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because we're going to strain it anyway. Scratch that idea. Put your strainer in there, and it'll catch the drips. How's that? That sounds much better. Because yeah, you put the logic together on some other comments people were saying about putting that in there for the dirt. What does it matter if dirt falls in there? You're just going to put it in there and put it in there anyway. I guess in theory it sounded good. Alright, you got a mask on, get this spray pattern where I want it, kick this fan on, and uh, let's get painting. So, you're not going to probably hear me very well. I'll try to mumble the best I can with this face mask on. Alright, hopefully you can hear me. You should be able to hear me. So, move it a little bit. Here. I'm going to get this out of here. I think that's actually, uh, it's actually good. I think that's what I want. Yeah, that's not coming out lumpy at all. All right, so as I said, 14 ounces of paint, four ounces of reducer, four capfuls of hardener. Seem to work very well to pretty much get you a full, uh, it's you know, two fluid ounces, so that'll get you, and then what's in that cup over there? Mixes up about 20 ounces in total. Makes sense. 14, blah, 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 yeah, 20 ounces, 20. So you get a full cup of paint. That should be more than enough for me to do what I have to do. Now I am going to move these fenders. I'm going to bring the small parts over first again. I'm going to spray the smalls, then we're going to spray these fenders.
every so often is good to kind of make sure you don't get a lot of paint built up around your nozzles. So every so often I'll clean them out in between. Much better. That's good. Yeah, in case you're wondering, yes, the motor popped my GFI again, so I'm going to finish spraying this, obviously without the <coughs> dust booth running, uh, paint booth running. I got my doors open, got a fan drawn through, pull most of it out, and then after this video, I got a motor um, to replace that with, because, yeah, I ain't dealing with this one anymore.
That looks good to me. Well, the grill is actually cutting that off. Put a bit of pearl on it. Alright. I'm going to hit pause, take this over, and then, um, yeah, I don't know, I guess just do a little recap here. Alright, so let's see how much paint was left in the gun from that. Let's see if I can do this with uh, one hand here. Eh, quite a bit of paint. So, I think this job here, I could have got away with mixing probably 10 ounces um, of paint and then just cutting back to probably three caps and three ounces of reducer. And I think that would have been probably just fine for what I did here. Um, other than that, the next thing up is going to be, next thing up is just gonna be doing the body work on the hood. I got a really bad crease going through it here and then all this has been chewed up and destroyed so I'm gonna have to straighten all this out the grill I've already started on that and then the gas tank so like I said I got lucky on the tank the tank's actually fairly decent shape um, obviously the inside I got to clean as a whistle now so there's no rust inside at all and I think it might be one or two small dents on it that's about it so other than that I'm gonna go ahead and let this stuff dry up and then uh, seven days we will be shooting the clear on the fenders with the pearl on it this stuff here will be ready to go back on the tractor in a couple days so thank you again for watching please like subscribe share um, any questions comments please feel free to leave them other than that i hope everybody has a happy new year thanks for watching